Hi guys, I'm Sean. And I'm Adrian. And this is Archie. And you know us as the Bobo Boys. If you bother watching our silly skits on YouTube, which you probably don't. But hey, today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to be watching some of our favourite films of all time and reviewing them for you. But we're waiting on a little friend of ours to help us do that, who clearly seems to be off on another planet today. I know, he's always late. Sorry I'm late, I had some unfinished business in Sydney. Normally what happens when you use your fist. So, what's going on? Well Jason, we were just about to watch and review some of our favourite movies of all time. Oh, are we now? Well, that's a good idea. I've got plenty of favourites, but I know the top one. Well, we'll be watching that soon. But first, it's Adrian's turn with his favourite film. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Die Hard! Yeah! Best Christmas movie ever. Totally no, agree. it's not. It is. Uh, it is a yeah, Christmas is. movie. No, it isn't. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Now, Die Hard, it was released in 1988. Wow, 80s, great action movie. Anyway, it is a Christmas movie, no doubt about that. Anyway, this is what the movie is, hey, this is what the movie is about. Hoping to spend Christmas with his estranged wife, direct, uh, Detective John McClane, arrives in LA. However, he learns about a hostage situation in an office building and his wife is one of the hostages. Dun, dun, dun. Anyway, it's great. Anyway, it's, the director is John McTiernan. McTiernan. Anyway, it's a great movie. It uh, has five movies in this uh, great awesome movie series. You should watch all of them. They're all good. And uh, yeah, Die Hard is obviously the best one. So, uh, also the best Christmas movie ever. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, ah. take it away. Movie theater screen. Ah. No, it's not. Let's just grab snacks. Let's just do that, shall we? Shanks! Dorito! I wonder what I should have. Hmm. Oh look, mozzarella cheese. Yummy. Yeah, very good now. Yep, that's right. Oh, I just had a little bit. No, social distancing, hand sanitizer, you gotta eat that now. What, just because I touched all of the cheese doesn't mean that I have to eat all of the cheese. That's right. Apparently it's the rules. So Are yeah, you saying yeah. that I have to eat this throughout the whole movie now? Yes. That's right, yeah, hours. one full stomach at the end of this. Yeah. Guys, look, we've been friends for a long time, but there is no way on earth for hygiene purposes I am eating an entire packet of mozzarella. Oh my goodness, we just, we guys, we just watched Die Hard. High five! Yeah! High five! High five. Oh, okay. Guess they were dying hard or not. <laughs> big question of the year. Not so much whether it's a Christmas movie, but also a big question. Why is it called Die Hard? Because... People die hard? Yeah, I suppose, but it's why. Yeah, but that could be the name of any action movie. Also, another big question. Why is Die Hard the best Christmas movie ever? Question is, why is Jason delusional? Now tell me, what is the plot that <clears throat> you think makes it such a great movie in general? What do you think makes it a great movie? We'll see. He John McClane, is that his name? Yes. He's John trying McClane. to get back to his family at Christmas. Christmas. And, and co not coincidentally, and actually meets his wife at a Christmas party on Christmas Eve. Which Christmas, does not need to be. And trying Christmas to make amends to relationship so the kids can have a better Christmas. Christmas. See? And have Christmas their family week. back together in general. I mean, look, the villain's name is Hans Gr what's his Gruber. name? Gruber. Gruber, see, it sounds like Grinch. Hans Grinch, see? It's no, that is, uh, that is a similarity <laughs> that you are pretending to be on deliberate. Do you honestly think that's deliberate? 
This is Jason, yes. folks. He makes silly connections, especially when he's losing a debate. Remember when we were debating Star Wars versus Star Trek back in high school? Star Wars is better, hands down, factual information. No, Star Trek is better. And as with Die Hard, Die Hard, factually, is a Christmas movie. And it's also heart. the best of the whole series. Yes. And if we may go further, I think that one of my favourite things about the movie was some of the massive plot twists throughout it, and not to mention the backstories with all of the characters coming out at various points. The Agreed. Slight comedic backlash part with there being a guy in a limo back in the... <clears throat> Garage of the place that that just that that rounds out the movie. That's then. called oblivious nature. Yeah, mm. and don't forget Twinkie Man. And then there's Carl, the yeah. literal zombie of Germany. Twinkie Man, he likes his Twinkies. I love Some them. of the uh, characters become better people throughout the movies. Others simply desensitize themselves even further. <clears throat> Also, reporters can make situations worse, as we were clearly demonstrated by. Oh, yeah. Yes, they certainly can. As and also, actor, Sucker taking a punch to the face. Oh! Which I'm sure we've seen him do plenty of times oh, before, just... since he appeared also in Ghostbusters, in case you didn't notice that last time you watched it. <laughs> I just realised why it might be called Die Hard. Because Hans Gruber... Fell out of a window, as did many other villains and many he other He died villains. hard! Many other oh. villains do that. <laughs> However, there's also another reason why it might be called Die Hard. Because with the amount of blood that was splaying, you can I... make red dye, so they were dying hard. <laughs> oh yeah. That is another case <laughs> of Jason's ridiculous similarities, which are utterly Amazing. silly. Yeah. Silly similarities that, that he makes okay. up. You know what? What I really love about Die Hard. You know what I really love about Die Hard. I just love the characters. Like John McClane, he was awesome. Um, John McClane's basically a New York cowboy, pretty much. And Hans Gruber, wow, he's my favorite villain out of all. Every it also movie reminds me ever. of another film that I'm familiar with. Any of you guys remember Skyscraper? Oh, skyscraper. Yes, yes. It's you do realize what? You know, yes, that skyscraper is literally Die Hard. Yes, yes, it is. Well, not oh, exactly. The rock. <laughs> not exactly. In Die Hard, they're trying to jump out of the skyscraper, whereas in Skyscraper, they're trying to get into the skyscraper. And oh, wow. again. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that too, and also trying to save the thing from literally yeah. becoming a towering inferno. Which is another great movie. Mm, yes. Unless you can hold your pee for eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hang on, you just do that at school. See? So anyway, know. okay. And the number thing, the one-liners, they're great. You know, you be yay. Yes, of course. We all know that action movie writers don't like writing dialogue very much, and so they resort to punchy one-liners that people then make memes about, which apparently is how they make a career in this industry. Hmm. That's actually not untrue. But one-liners are amazing. Oh yeah. I do love the one-liners. Okay. Let's see. And also, you know, just just everything to do with Die Hard is awesome. 10 out of 10. Who's with me? I'm yet to rank it myself, but I give it a very high review nonetheless. Jason? You really only gave it a 10 out of 10? What, 11 out of 10? Excuse me. 15 million bajillion trillion zigrupulalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalal
Well then, it looks like it's just the Jedi Master and myself here to enjoy the rest of these movie and reviews with you. And when we're done, I might have to go find some unfinished business. And when I'm done, I shall probably go back to my room and take a nap as people do after making YouTube videos. Look it up. <clears throat> Not me. Finally, we can move on to the next movie. <clears throat> Drum roll, please. Our next movie is... It's a Wonderful Life. Nice! Yes, folks, it is that black and white movie every Christmas your grandparents force you to watch. Well, it turns out, it's actually good if you pay attention. <clears throat> What's paying attention? I don't know how to do that. Good, I'm glad you were paying attention. So, folks... Just kidding, I don't know how to pay attention. It's a Wonderful Can't Life imagine. was... Directed by none other than Frank Coppers, a director who you don't know because you were born a long time after he died. It is <laughs> voted to be the greatest inspiration movie of all time and <clears throat> has kept that title for over for nearly a hundred years now. Do we class it as a Christmas movie? Dead set, yes. It's a very good Christmas movie. Oh it's yes, just, it most certainly is. There's just one Christmas movie that's better. Oh yes, of course, Mother Christmas Carol. How could I forget? No, hope now, no. You had me going there. But and even then, no, it's there's not. just one that's even better than Home Alone. So if anybody, oh. well, so if anybody <laughs> feels like <clears throat> pulling a lasso around the moon and pulling it. Damn, this movie is for you. Intriguing. So be sure to watch It's a Wonderful Life, just like we're about to do so. But because you don't have time to a wonderful life. But you don't have time to be watching us watch the movie. So we're going to skip straight to the review with this fancy transition. Well folks, that was a great movie. What yeah, do you think, Jason? Bloody long one as well. Very long one, it was roughly the same length as any other. Was it? Oh yeah, that's right. In fact, it was the same length as the movie we watched before, check. <laughs> well then, maybe it felt longer because it was such a good movie. Thank you very much. Mm, I must admit, I was quite sceptical at first, but I watched it and... You're not used enough. to black and white, are you? Whoa. Yeah, I am. Yin-yang, black white. Folks, It's a Wonderful Life it follows the life of George Bailey, a young man who wants to go out, conquer the world, and become richest man alive, and have more adventures than anyone. And drinks Baileys. I'm joking, he doesn't. <laughs> Naturally, he ends up in a poor house, running a poor bank, spending nickels to look after his big family. Thinks that his life is not worth living, and tries to kill himself. But, thanks to supernatural intervention, aka an angel called Clarence, not to mention a lot of help from his loving community who are very grateful for him, he pays off his debts, becomes the richest man in town, and realizes what a wonderful life he has. Hence the name of Zi Limouvé. Yep, it's a wonderful life. So, <clears throat> It's a good reflection for our own lifestyles. Yes, especially... No matter how busy I get, I enjoy it, to some extent. And I think what they say at the very end is very much true. No man is a failure who has friends. And there you go. Yes. Well, it's quite easy for us nowadays to count our value based on what we have and what we do. I know that... Whoa. That Reese, a uh, friend, um, got a new car, which we're very happy about, but I just like him because he's my friend. Exactly. That is the point. Any uh, favourite parts from the movie? You can link that meaning to another life, The Meaning of Life, by Monty Python. <laughs> and that is also a very good movie. Yes, it is. I would wait till you're 15 though, till you watch it. Or if you're over yeah. 15, why haven't you seen it yet? Go check it out. Stop slapping off. So, Jason, you mentioned something about George Bailey, the main character. You said he, you found him kind of relatable. 
Can you elaborate well, on that? Well, he wanted to be an urban planner, which is why I'm studying to become in uni. He mm -hmm. is very, he has a big passion for geography. Yes, uh -huh. he does. They literally call me the human atlas. Yes, they do. Or name every capital city of every country in the world. True facts, we'll probably make a video of that someday. And he also wanted to go everywhere. I do. Well, sorry, he wanted to go to Europe a lot. Me too, but yeah, he wanted to go to places. AKA okay, same here. Absolutely. And, and, you both, and you both also have quite a passionate mouth for words. And, and a similar number personality. Of them. Yes. We talk, but sometimes when it comes to certain alien, wait, elements, elements, we kind of get a little bit awkward and nervous. Yeah, especially around women. <laughs> now that bit for me though isn't true. Well, I want to deal with that. Oh really? Mostly. Well, folks, before we get into that, it's time for our next movie. The next movie we're gonna watch is. Drum roll, please. Star Wars! The best movie ever, and if you disagree, here's something you need to know. There are two thi there are two types of people in this world. Those who love Star Wars, and those who are wrong. <laughs> because Star Wars is the best movie. Well then, let's jump into it and watch it right now. And may the force be with you! Nothing like a good old Star Wars film for YouTube nerds like you to sit back and listen to our opinion as though it were official. If your friends don't like Star Wars, it's simple. These are not the friends you are looking for. And you can trust him on that because he's on YouTube, therefore he's right. <laughs> Bring you factual information, aka 2020 quote. <clears throat> No. So, Jason, would you say that Star Wars A New Hope is your favourite Star Wars film? It's not my favourite, but you know, the original is always the original. Okay, which one and is your favourite? Charismatic charm. Charismatic charm and copyright infringements that have never been acted upon. Copyright infringements? Oh, come what? on, that movie's hardly original. But a masterpiece nonetheless. My favourite one would have to be Return of the Jedi. That is a good one. I like it too. I, mean, I suppose you like oversized teddy bears. You mean Ewoks? Oversized teddy bears. <laughs> they are not warm. Well, okay, they're oversized. Okay, okay, you're not, I'm not wrong. Two things about Ewoks. They're cute, and if you make them angry, don't get in their way. Too right, Jason. I actually struggle to find my favourite Star Wars film. And don't crucify me in the uh, quotes below, folks. But I struggle to choose between New Hope and Rise of Skywalker. What's wrong with those two? They're both excellent. Oh, some people might scrutinise that I'm a fan of the Disney ones. Either you're right, or their opinion doesn't matter. <laughs> and you can trust him on that too, because he's on YouTube. He must be right. <laughs> Even then. <laughs> don't compare it to... Obviously you need to compare all Star Wars to the original trilogy, but they need to have their own charismatic charm to them. Quite right, Jason. Now let's right. talk in a British accent, so we can say charismatic charm. So uh, what, what would you say is the message of the movie Star Wars New Hope. You always have, no matter how bad the situation is, you always have a new hope. That's very right, Jason, very right. So even who said Star Wars is just science fiction and kind of like real life? Well, it's, it really is in terms of plot. I mean, look at the Empire Strikes Back. That relates to real life, except you just change Empire to government. Yes, I can. Compare a lot of the re of the prequels to government, and then Return of the Jedi, which is Return of the People. And if you look at the plot of New Hope, it is essentially just the hero's plot of this little farm boy wants to be a big hero out in the world. He meets an old wise guy who knows a couple of stuff. He goes on a long journey to deliver some 
sort of um, heroism. He ends up in the final battle. He meets a few friends along the way. That's and a pretty girl. Yes, a pretty girl. And Which, spoilers, happens to turn out to be his sister. And then yeah, he saves not the weird at day. All. Come on, how many times have we seen that in a movie? Well, we have it in real life. Yes, we do. Tasmania. <laughs> I don't even get it, folks. Main thing is, is that you can compare Star Wars. No, nothing wrong with Tasmania. Tasmania is a beautiful place. Should you can compare Star Wars New piece. Hope with, say, Harry Potter, uh, Lord Star of the Wars Rings. That's a close tie, though. Uh, not in quality, but in plot, they're very much quality in plot. They're very much the same thing. Same goes for Hunger Games. Those three things, very similar plot to Star Wars New Hope. Ah, actually, I'm going to do a theme here. Yes, folks, it's called the Heroes Plot. It's an ancient plot, it's been applied to thousands of cultures around the world, has had many adaptations. There's some deep philosophy here. Yeah, it's, it's looking between the lines of movies, finding patterns. If you say you can't be a philosopher or analyze text or movies, think again. You see, this is why you pay attention in English class like I did. Well, pay attention in English class. Unless you're learning about Shakespeare, and then you can just ignore that and fall asleep. No, I wouldn't go that far either. Uh, Shakes analyzing poems is good. Analyzing Shakespeare is like analyzing ridiculousness. Like the we, like inventing the word bubble. Which he did. Okay, there's a few things he invented, invented the but knock, most knock, of the knock, times he knock, just... Knock, knock. But there's a few things, but most of his works is just ancient and unrelatable. Back to Majestic the subject of Star Wars. If you want to learn how what inspired Star Wars, aka every science fiction or Asian movie before Star Wars came out, basically inspired it, you can find a lot of those videos on YouTube where people are always right. Really? And I mean, if you want to learn more about the hero's plot... Hands uh, up if you think Phantom Menace is the best one of the Star Wars movies. I better not see any hands there. You can leave a comment Hang down on. below. One of our staff reckons he's got his hand up. Our staff has got his hands up. What should Guess we do we'll with him? just have to fire him. I've got a better idea. Security? Yeah. No, 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 Maybe I've got a better stuff. idea than that. <clears throat> I find your lack of faith disturbing. Ooh, juicy. That one hurts. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. So, a rating out of 10. Oh, gee, you know I'm awful at giving ratings out of 10. Really? The Star Wars? You're struggling? Nine and a half. Star Wars is such a good film that you can't find a number big enough to rate it. That's how good it is. I heard it was originally going to be a standalone film. <laughs> Let's see how that worked out, huh? Well, no, it's now got nine in the entire ridiculous sequ sequential... And season. then two in other the entire, side films? In the entire subsequent and prequel and subsequential trilogicalness... Trilogy... Trilogy... In the Am I talking to a uh, human or Tigger? Whatever the front term is for nine logy. Probably anyway, folks, we better be finishing that, off now. Cheerios, have a lovely day. Wait, live long and prosper Star Trek. Oh yes, live long and prosper. Because may we just had that one in there, why not? So may the forest be with you. And you went Scottish. Yes. Or Irish. Anyway, cheerios. Have a lovely day. See you on the flip side. By the way, Jason, how are you planning to get home? Getting home? Well, is it that time already? Fair income. Time flies by when you're having fun. Well, you know me. 
Only one way to travel these days. Scotty, time to beam me up. Well, you know what they say? Bob's your father's uncle. Torn guy.